We're talking about DFAs. I hope you remember about DFAs from last time. I want to do some more examples. Um, I'll just refresh our memory with the example that we did last time. If sigma is A and B, that's our alphabet. So all of our strings are made up of A's and B's in this example. Um, a DFA to accept only strings with no B. This was the example we did at the end last time. The idea is I have two states, one um, which represents a string which has no B in it, and the other which represents a string which does have a B in it. And you start off in the no B state, and if you ever see a B, you go over to the yes B state. Um, if you're in the no B state and you see an A, you should remain in the no B state. And once you go over to the yes B state, no matter what you see here, you stay there because you this is meant to represent the state in which you have, at some point in the past, seen a B. So you never go back over to the other side. This is the DFA. All right. I could ask something like, is A, A, B, A accepted? Remember, the way to do this, the DFA reads this string one letter at a time from left to right. And so, and you start in the starting state, so you can like put your finger over here. And then you read this string one letter at a time. First comes A, and you follow this arrow, and you end up back there again. Next comes another A. I follow this arrow again. I'm still here. Next comes a B. I go over here. Next comes an A. I do this guy. And I end here. Since this is a rejecting state, that means it is not accepted. It's rejected. All right, remember the uh, state with the double line on it means that that's, the, that's an accepting state, and this is a rejecting state. It has only one sort of single line around it. Any questions about that? That was a simple example we did at the end last time. I want to do some that are a little more complicated, and maybe one that's a lot more complicated today. Um, how about, let's just do another one like that, and then I have some for you to try. Oh, sorry, one bit of terminology about that example in particular a bit of terminology. Um, this DFA accepts only strings with no B. So the language of the DFA in that example, the language of the DFA is this set, the set of, uh, it's the set of all the strings which are acceptable to that DFA. So in this case, it is the, the set of all strings with no B in them, right? This term, this phrase, the language of the DFA, it means the set of strings which the DFA accepts. Remember that word, language? Ah, I got my, my flippy flip is still on. That term language from last time, language just means a set of strings. So when I say the language of the DFA, I mean what is the set of strings that the DFA accepts? And in this particular example, it is the set of all strings with no B in them. That was the, part, the point of that DFA. You could also write this sort of more fancily, more fancy, more fancy like as a set. This is, we would typically write it as something like L of M. L means the language of, and if this, if this whole machine here is equal to M, this whole thing here is called M. The language of M, that's what L of M means. Uh, I could write this out as a set in the fancy kind of set, note, set theory notation. It's all strings with, uh, which are made up of A's and B's, which have no B's. Apparently that means it's all A's, right? So that would be like this. These strings are only A's. I'm saying the same thing here, although in, in quite a different way. When I wrote it in words, I said all strings with no B's in them. That means they must be all A's. And a string of all A's, you could just write as some power of A, where N is a natural number. Yeah? So it would be redundant to actually specify that you don't want B's. Yeah, right. In this case, so this means the set of all things which look like A to the N. So there, there can't be B's in there, because I said A to the N. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Let's try one more example I want to do together, and then I got some for you to try. 
on your own. How about let's make a DFA on the alphabet, again, A and B, which accepts any string with an even number of A's and no B, no B's. Even number of A's and no B's. This one is going to require three states. There's kind of two different things that the machine has to keep track of in this case. Are there B's or not? And also, is the number of A's even or, or not, right? So um, that would suggest maybe four total states, although you can do this in three. So my three states are going to be no B's, even A's, right? That's one possible configuration. Or it could have no B's, and odd A's. And then it could have yes B's, even A's, yes B's, odd A's. But actually those two, we, we don't need to keep them separately because the whole, the machine is supposed to automatically uh, have no A's, no B's ever. So actually if there are B's, that can be combined into a single state because at that point we don't care if the A's are odd or even. We should automatically reject in that, in that case. You have to think this through a little bit. And like I said, when you try a bunch of examples, you will gradually get more and more comfortable with these things. And I have several examples for you to try after, after we do this one. But these are my three states that I'm going to try and keep track of. And now we should try to draw in the arrows, which are the technical name is the transitions. So let's start over here. We need an outgoing arrow for each letter from this case. So if there are no Bs and an even number of As, and I see an A, what do you think? Where should it go to? Yeah. yeah, it should go over to the odd A's one. If I have an even number of A's and then I see one more A, then uh, it should go over to the odd A's. And apparently there's still no, no B's, right? Because I, I saw an A, so great. From this state up over here, um, what about if it's a B, where should we go? Yes, B's. Yeah, down to the yes, B's. Excellent. And we just got to think it through for all the other ones. So from this state over here, no B's and odd A's. If I see an A, I think that should go back over here because now I'll have an even number of A's. And if I see a B, I'll go down to the yes B's. Yes, please. And then finally from here, what should we do if we see an A in this state? Where should it go to? Yeah. It should stay where it is. Yeah, back to itself. If this represents any string which has any B's in it. If you see an A, well, it's still some string which has some B's in it. And if you see a B, also go back to itself. And remember, we, we sort of put them on the same arrow with a comma in that case. All right, this is the basic work of it, although you have to also decide where do we start and what is the accepting states, what is the rejecting states. Now, what I said was it accepts any string with an even number of A's and no B's. That means this is the only accepting state. Everything else should be rejecting. So I'm going to make that an accepting state. And where should we start? Yeah. No B's even A's. No B's even A's, yeah. You want to think about, when it comes to where you should start, you want to think about where in this, where in this diagram does the empty string fit? Because you start having read no letters at all. And the empty string has no B's in it, that's true. And the even number of A's, that's because uh, zero. Empty string has zero A's and zero counts as even. So there you go. This is the DFA. Anybody got any questions for that? I don't know if this seems easy to you. I think you'll find that like, since I wrote the three states at the beginning, then it's fairly easy to tell where the arrow should go. Maybe some of the challenge is just figuring out how to get it started at all with the, with the structure of the diagram in the beginning. Drawing the arrows in is usually not so hard to do once you have the, the right basic idea. Anyway, I got four examples for you to try in um, maybe in increasing level of difficulty or maybe decreasing. Not, well, not decreasing. I'm not sure about the first two, which one's harder or, or not. But anyway, I want you to try these. I hope you don't mind. I like to do this um, every so often. Maybe I like to do it every, every time we meet. I'm going to give you some examples. I'll walk around and see how you're doing. I'm not trying to grade you on this. I'm trying to help out, make sure that everybody is, um, is with it. Please feel free to talk to your friends if you got any. 
Um, so there are four, four different DFAs here. And I'm always going to use the alphabet A's and B's, you know, for these examples at least. A DFA on this alphabet, um, which accepts. Okay, number one, any any string starting with A. Number two. Any string ending with A. Number three, any string starting and ending with A. These have, will be of increasing complexity. Any string starting or ending with A. All right, see what you think. I will give you a few moments, yeah? Is each of these going to be one machine, or is it? Yeah, so four, four different uh, machines. OK. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> this is, doesn't make sense to do it all on, on one machine. These are four separate. You should expect, you know, your homework questions will be similar to this. These are four separate ones for you to try. By the way, homework is due on Wednesday, and I have posted the first assignment on our class website. Check it out. Follow the link on the syllabus. Second one's easier than the first one? I don't know. I think the first one's harder. Try the second one. I had to use three states to do the first one. I used yeah. only two states to do the second one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
and then we'll talk about them. I, I know not, um, it's fine if you didn't finish them all. Appreciate the, uh, the lively discussions everyone's had. Um, some of you, as I was walking around, I, um, some of you noticed that uh, you know there's more than one ways to do some of these, and it is possible that you might have used more states than you really had to. Um, that's fine too. So your answers don't have to look like mine. But anyway, any string starting with a, the way that I did the first one was come on now. So starting with a. The way that I did that one is basically I have some kind of starting state which just immediately funnels me into two alternatives. If it began with an A, I go up top and that should be accepting. And from there, no matter what happens after that point, it should be accepting forever, all right? And if I started with a B from the beginning, this should be rejecting, and no matter what happens after that, it should always reject. I think this is what people said. Now, as I was going, I heard a lot of discussion about what exactly should I label this or that state. It's actually not necessary to give them labels at all. The labels are just to help you conceive of what those states represent. But my diagram with no labels on it, it has the same accepted and rejected strings as whatever you want to call the labels yourself. So. Um, I will put the labels in if I want somehow to clarify something to myself or to everybody else. But when you're doing the homework or whatever, when you're doing DFAs in your own personal life, you don't have to put the labels. 
That was kind of a joke. Nobody does DFAs in their own personal life. But um, All right, I hope you got something like this. Any questions about that one? Great. Uh, the second one ends with an A, all right? This one I did only in one state, no, no, two states. You can't do it in one state. Ends with an A, all right? First of all, the beginning state should not be accepting. That's because the empty string does not end with A, right? The empty string doesn't end with anything. But um, my idea behind this one is if you see an A, you should go over to this accepting state. I'll call this one, uh, I don't know, how about I'll call it just saw A, all right? The one that I just read was an A. That's what that state means over there. Um, you can't start in that state because the empty string doesn't have an A on the end of it. Um, but if you just saw A and you read another A, you should stay in that state. If you just saw an A and you read a B, that means actually you should go back here. Or the first state means something like, I did not just see an A, all right? And if I make this the accepting state, I think that'll do it. This will accept any string that ends with an A. I hope that's, that's similar to what you said. Yeah? You need a loop on the first one for B, right? Uh, yes, thank you. I have no outgoing arrow with a B in the first state, so this is correct now. Great, thanks. Any other thoughts? All right, let's try the third one. Starting and ending with A. This is where it gets a little more complicated, and some, you know, as I was walking around, some people really only looked at the first two, and that's, that's fine. I didn't give you that much time, but I wanted to move on, so. Starting and ending with A. All right, uh, I also did this one with three states. I tried to do some, some kind of, uh, I don't know, maybe some kind of combination of those two, although it's, um, actually now, now that I look at my paper, I can see that I messed it up. I don't know if my answer on the paper is salvageable, actually. Um, starting and ending with A, I gotta start somewhere, and then if I start with an A, this is gonna go to an accepting state, because just A by itself should be accepted. Um, I also want to accept things, uh, if I start with a B, that's an immediate failure. So this is a common pattern. I'm gonna close the door again. Um, this little little bit of the diagram here, this is like a permanent rejection kind of thing. This is the way to think about that. Just that little piece of the diagram. Permanent rejection. Am I right, fellas? We've all been there. Um, so the way that I think about, this is not my whole answer, but the way that I at least I'm starting to think about it, is I start off, if you see A at the beginning, it should be accepted. If you see a B, a B at the beginning, it should be rejected no matter what. So everything should be rejected after that fact. So, and this is how you make that happen. You go to a rejecting state which has loop back for uh, every other letter. Okay, now I need to continue up top. If you begin with an A and then you see an A again, I think actually then it still is uh, ending with an A. So here I'm going to put a loopy with the A like that. That would mean if you, if you begin with an A and then you see some more A's, then it should still be acceptable. All right, what if you begin with an A and then you see a B? That has to go somewhere else to a rejecting state. But you can get back by seeing another A. And this is my final answer. So the accepting state which I wrote here, this is for strings which start and end with A, all right? The only way to get there is to start with A. Once you're already there, you can stay there if you have uh, an A. If you ever see a B, you can come back by, by uh, reading another A at the end, all right? This one's a little tricky, I think. Anybody have questions about that? 
I don't know if it's more, more confusing or less confusing when I leave the labels out. Sometimes you can get sort of fixated on the labels and that's not, not uh, entirely what is helpful to think about. Although, uh, as I said, you really have to do a bunch of examples to kind of get used to this, just like learning a programming language. All right. And then the last one was about or. Starts with an A or ends with an A. So start or end with A. All right. Um, for this one, is kind of similar to that one, although sort of upside down. But I'm, I'm again going to start off with this kind of scenario. Because what you start with matters, right? Whether I start with an A or B has a big effect on what else I'm going to do. Now, since it says starting or ending, it means the, the upward track in this example is like a permanent accepting state, right? Before I had permanent rejection, this is like permanent accepting. Because once you start with A, no matter what you do after that, it should be acceptable. So here, I'm going to put accepting with a loop back to itself. So if it starts with A, then no matter what happens, it will be accepted. And then the other track needs to be accepted only when it ends with A, which is going to look, I mean, similar to previous ones like this. All right. If A is the last thing that you see, then it should be accepted. I need uh, a few more arrows here, but there should be an A like that and a B like that. So if you begin with a B, the only way to be accepted is to end with an A. So you, if you see an A, you can go over to the accepting state. It'll still be accepted if you see more A's, or if you do a B, as long as it's followed by A. All right. This one is a little tricky. I don't know if anybody got any, any variations on these. Uh, like I said before, it is possible to get sort of two different looking answers that are both correct. Although, I don't know if you can do it correctly in only four states. If it doesn't look like that, I'm, I'm not sure. Any thoughts about that? Yeah. So you can have multiple acceptance states? Yes. Yes, you can. Yeah, like I did here. Yeah, there can be several accepting states and there can be several rejecting states. And actually, I'm not sure. I mean, it, you could also ask, is it possible to do this one using only one accepting state? I think it's probably not, but I, I don't know about that. It's like trying to write a, a computer program using as few lines as possible. You can try to do that just for fun, but uh, you know, I'm, on our homeworks or on our tests or something, I'm not going to try and make you be cute about it. Just give me one that works. All right. Great. You will have the opportunity to do lots more examples like that on the homework. And if you thought some of these were hard, they kind of were. I mean, this is the first time we've been doing them, so um, don't worry if those seemed a little tricky. All right. The big question that we are going to be asking for the first, uh, you know, couple weeks here, big question on the topic of DFAs, big question is, that's supposed to be a QU, but it looks like a QW, which that's works so that works also. But the big question is, um, what kinds of things can be decided by a DFA? Um, we've, we've seen the examples so far have been things like, does it begin with an A? Could you make one that says, like, does it begin with a B? Yeah, it'd be similar to what we just did. Does it end with an A? So DFAs are capable of answering those kinds of questions. We also had, um, so what kinds of things can be decided by DFAs? I would say it can, it can decide things like ending versus beginning letters, right? It can tell me if a string begins or ends with something or other. It can also decide things about even versus odd, right? Because we had that even number of A's and no B, the thing that I did earlier, right? If you want to do a DFA which has to do with evens versus odds, basically you have two states and it flip-flops back and forth between the two. So DFAs can answer uh, can make decisions based on you know evens versus odds. 
What other kinds of things can a DFA uh, um, compute, right? You might say, another way of saying this is like, a DFA can tell the difference between the evens and odds, or it can tell what a string begins with, or what a string ends with, or something like that. Um, what else can we uh, answer? This is sort of a big general question. What other kinds of things can be decided by DFAs? I said even versus odd. How about can we? Um, how about can we do um, like except a to the n when n is even? We already did an example like that. That was just this, right? With an accepting state here. If the alphabet is only a's, then telling whether you have an even number of A's or not is like this, with the two states, and you go back and forth. How about, um, can we decide A to the N, except A to the N when N is divisible by three? You know, even is the same as divisible by two. Can anybody think of, how would we make it except only when it's divisible by three? It's actually a similar kind of thing to that, that example, just change it a little bit, yeah? Yeah, make three states, and then how should the arrows go? Just keep moving A. Yeah, kind of like in a circle around three states. So if I start with an accepting state, and I go like this, and I go like this, and I go like this, right? This way, in order to get accepted, you got to do three A's, or you could do three more A's. So it could be a, uh, three A's, or six A's, or nine A's, right? This will accept only when there are a, divis uh, a number of A's which is divisible by three. Right? Yeah, great. How about, you know, divisible, uh, or how about when A is not divisible by 3? Yeah? Can you just make the other two accepting states? Yeah, yeah. You use the same diagram, but just sort of flip flop which ones are accepted and which ones are not accepted, right? So this would look like this. This. Great. Yeah, something like that. This will accept when A is not divisible by 3. How about, you want to get fancy here? When uh, A, sorry, I said A here. I meant N. N is the, the exponent. A is, not, a is not a number, so A is just an alphabet symbol. How about when uh, N, you into this? How about when N equals 1 mod 3? That means that the remainder after you divide n by 3 is 1. That is, n is a multiple of 3, but with 1 left over. Can we make that happen? Yeah. Same diagram, but the top one is divisible. One. Yeah, same diagram, but only this one up here is accepting. Really, uh, if you were to label these states, I think it would make sense to label this one is like n equals 0 mod 3, right? This one is the state where n equals 1 mod 3, and this is the state where n equals 2 mod 3, right? If you were to put labels, that's, that's what you meant by those three states, all right? So DFAs can compute things about, you know, divisibility, this kind of mod, mod stuff. What about uh, accepts? a to the n when n is prime, a prime number. This, my friends, is much, much more complicated. Uh, and this is the kind of thing you, sh you should start thinking about. Maybe that's not even possible to do using a DFA. Um, you would have to somehow, so like this diagram can tell if it's divisible by three. To tell if it's prime, you basically need to check if it's divisible by any number less than it. You check if it's divisible by three using this. You could also check if it's divisible by five using one of these, but with five states. Or by seven, right? You, this is what's required to check if a number is prime. Can it be divided by any of these? And then you could somehow try to combine all of those, docu all of those DFAs together some monster DFA, but even so, there'd be infinitely many of them that you have to combine together. Any you thought? probably need something that has a capability of memory, right? Yeah. 
you need some kind of memory. Now, you, from a certain point of view, these DFAs do have some kind of memory because like, as you move, say, from one state to another here, you could think, as I'm moving around, it is remembering what the, what the value is mod 3, right? But to check if something is prime, I, at least I kind of feel like you would need some sort of infinite, potentially infinite amount of memory because you never know how big the number's gonna be. Anyway, this question, I would say, much, much harder, at least, right? Maybe impossible. And, spoiler alert, yes, it is impossible. <laughs> I happen to know. It really is impossible to do this. Um, so th the question of what kinds of things can a DFA compute? The answer is certainly not, it can do anything, right? There are certain, and, and this is not even a, a super crazy mathematical problem, right? There are certain fairly simple mathematical ideas that everybody can, can understand that nevertheless cannot be computed by a DFA, right? There are, there are limitations. What makes it impossible actually has to do as far as the, the letters, DFA, it's the F that's the problem. The F is that this, the DFA has only finitely many states. To check if something is prime, for an individual number, you only need finitely many checks. But to make a general purpose machine, which is capable of checking any number, you need a potentially infinite number of states to check. And that's not going to work out. So, uh, it is impossible, basically because of the finiteness restriction on a DFA. All right. Um, if you know something about prime numbers, you know like that is a deceptively simple property. Like every every kid knows what a prime number is, but even if you're using a computer, it, the question of determining whether or not a given number is prime is not simple at all for for really big numbers. So, um, but there are actually much. Um, much even simpler than this problem set still a DFA is not capable of computing. Here's another example which we are going to talk a lot more about this example um, in a while but anyway how about this how about ex, uh, a DFA which accepts any string with the same number of A's and B's. So think of a string that uses A's and B's. I want a DFA that will accept if it's the same number of A's and B's and will reject if it's a different number. This also is impossible to do with the DFA. You might say, can't you just like count up all the A's and then count up all the B's? Um, and to just say to see if they're the same or not? The answer is you can't really do that because again, this would require a potentially infinite amount of memory to keep track of how many A's there were and then go through again and keep track of how many B's there were. Um, this also is impossible. Although, um, we're not really gonna talk about that example up there with the prime numbers. Uh, I don't wanna get into that with too much detail. This example we are actually gonna talk about in, in quite some detail and actually try to demonstrate that it really is impossible. For now, I'm just gonna tell you, this is impossible with the DFA. Although you shouldn't necessarily believe me at this point, but we are going to uh, get, uh, talk about that example again later on. All right. Many things are possible with DFAs, many things are not possible. And uh, maybe I'll fill you in on sort of like the, the large structure of this course. Like I said, we're gonna talk about several different types of machines. The DFA is the simplest one, and also kind of the, the stupidest one, or the least capable one. There are many things that a DFA cannot do. Many questions that a DFA is not capable of answering. As we go through the semester, we're gonna gradually introduce more and more complicated types of machines, which have more and more capabilities. Um, eventually coming to the, the Turing, the you know, universal Turing machine, which can basically do everything, although not, not quite everything. But uh, that's, that's the general structure of where we're going. All right, we got five minutes remaining. Um, I was gonna do one sort of monster example, a very complicated, big 
example DFA, which we can't do in the next, uh, in our remaining four minutes, but I'll give you a little introduction to it. Um, I just said a few minutes ago, nobody uses DFAs in their own personal life. Actually, this is an example. It's not really something you would use in your life, but sometimes you can model real world situations um, using DFAs. DFAs can model simple uh, situations. I'm trying to solve a, a specific kind of simple but kind of complicated puzzles, you can uh, model them as DFAs. Any sort of scenario which, which is only capable of being in finitely many configurations at a time, you can um, model as a DFA. And I thought um, I wanted to do a big example about the, um, this is a puzzle with, um, this is the thing about the farmer and the goat and the fox or, or something, the farmer and the goat and the cabbage, and they have to go across the river. You know what I'm talking about? That puzzle. Um, I want to try and sort of analyze that puzzle using the structure of a DFA. So this uh, is, what I, on my paper I called it, the farmer has three things. The farmer with the goat, the cabbage, and the, um, the, predator, the predatory animal, I'll call it the hyena. I don't know why the, the farmer is hanging out with the hyena. But um, the hyena, the idea is, if you haven't heard this before, the hyena wants to eat the goat, the goat wants to eat the cabbage. The farmer, if he's present, can prevent them from all eating each other. And the idea is the farmer and the goat and the cabbage and the hyena want to go across the river but uh, only the, the, uh, the boat can only carry two of them at a time. So how can the farmer, by going across, he can bring one thing at a time across with him. How can the farmer make it all the way across um, with all of his friends? And the idea is they, they bring one over, leaves it over there, goes back, and then pick, picks up somebody else, brings them over, and, but they can't leave certain of them together, so there's some, some amount of back and forth, all right? I'm gonna try to model this as a DFA. We're not gonna get to finish this in detail today, but um, I want to model this in terms of states. So where they are um, makes sort of a possible state, and there are only so many possible configurations that they can be in. And then um, each trip across the river moves them from one state to another. All right, and I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna label the states in a way which describes where everybody is. So a state looks like uh, here's how my this is somewhat cryptic, but I think describes everything nicely. Something like this. So I'm going to label a state like that. The line down the middle is the river. And then who's on what side is where the, where the letters are, okay? So what this state represents is the goat and the farmer are on the left side of the river, and the cabbage and the hyena are on the right side of the river, all right? And I'm going to draw an arrow from here representing what, um, what happens when they move somehow. So what, what are the allowable moves from this configuration? Um, the farmer can go across with the goat. And I'm going to write that like this. So a, a transition labeled with G means bring the G across, bring the goat across the river. And where does that go from there? Actually, that ends up with them all being on this side of the river, right? There was another legal move. Uh, from that state on the left. Now the state on the right will also have four outgoing arrows. 
uh, or a certain number of outgoing arrows for what, what the legal moves are. The state on the left, another legal move from the state on the left would be if the farmer goes across carrying nothing. All right, and I'm going to label that with, uh, I'll say, an N. So an N means nothing. The farmer goes across the river carrying nothing. And then it looks like G over here, F, C, and H. All right? Now, this is just a piece of the DFA, but uh, next time I want to draw the full diagram of all the possible moves. It's not that big, but it's, it's kind of big. And we'll see, once you can see that diagram, it actually allows you to answer basically any question you would want to answer about this puzzle. All right, that'll do it.